Well, hello, Courier Nation. Welcome to the Deliver on Your Business podcast, where you are the boss. If you deliver for Grubhub, DoorDash, Postmates, Uber Eats, or any of those others, this podcast is for you. They said you have to be an independent contractor, which makes you a business owner. We are here to help you think like one and claim your rights and your opportunities. Welcome back, Courier Nation. It's another week gone, and we are into September already. Folks, I had planned on doing an episode on each of the four main food delivery services on Postmates, Grubhub, DoorDash, and Uber Eats. And you've, if you've listened to uh, previous episodes, you know that we've already done one on Grubhub and Postmates. My intention has been to do DoorDash next, and I still plan to get to that. But that's kind of on hold right now because really I want to wait until their new pay model drops to get a feeling for how that actually works out. And that might be a few weeks. They've been dragging their feet on this. And Courier Nation, this has been such a long, drawn-out process that I thought maybe that would be a good topic for this week. So let's talk about DoorDash and their pay models and all of the drama around it. Let's talk about what they're paying, why they're paying it now, what they're talking about moving to, what that might look like. See, here's the deal, Courier Nation. I think that the current pay model that DoorDash has has a lot to do with why they've actually been able to move ahead of Grubhub and take the lead in market share. And that's not about them making more money because so far they're not making money, but it has more to do with some other things. I think it's really a big deal to uh, DoorDash right now. I think that's why they're dragging their feet. Uh, it's been successful for them. And... Uh, they're kind of being forced into changing it. And I think it scares the bejeebers out of them right now. It's that big of a deal. So let's let's dig into a little bit of why that is. Folks, I think to understand why this is such a big deal to DoorDash, though, is you've got to understand, you've got to look at the timing of when they adopted their current pay model. Now, prior to about mid-2017, uh, DoorDash was paying drivers a very simple $5 plus tips. I mean, ultimately, it kind of sounds a lot like what they say the pay model is right now. It's $1 plus tips, but it was $5 plus tips. It didn't matter how long it took, what, what, what was involved. It was $5 plus tips. Now, honestly, I don't know, you know, when, uh, when it comes to playing the averages and things like that, I'm not sure that's really all that bad of a pay model, but you know, it was well before I started delivering for them. But the question is, why did they change it? And from what I can gather, though, it's really, it's all about getting orders fulfilled when the customer doesn't tip, especially. Because if you watch what's happening with Grubhub right now, that's a big challenge they've got. That is a big problem for Grubhub, is that when there is no tip, those orders are not getting picked up by drivers. And, uh, and I think that that has a lot to do with why Grubhub has lost market share. But anyway, you get into this situation and this is where the timing enters into the discussion because DoorDash was known for having a lot tighter requirements about acceptance rates. They could uh, kind of take a little bit of action against you if you didn't accept enough deliveries. And they were hit with a big class action suit. Uh, ultimately, they ended up with a $5 million settlement that... Uh, uh, the settlement finally came down in about uh, April of 2017. And part of the arrangement as part of this settlement was that they were going to change some policies. They're going to better define their activation or deactivation policy. And ultimately, I think what it came down to was DoorDash could do this. And on these, you know, $5 plus tip and on these orders where there wasn't enough of a tip, they put enough pressure and exerted enough control over drivers that uh, they could still get those orders taken. But what happened to them was they got it handed to them in court because they're requiring drivers to accept a percentage of orders. And that crossed the line of what you can do as an independent contractor, because this was a lawsuit over misclassification of employees. Now, if they can't force drivers anymore to accept the orders, now they got to figure out what to do about those no tip orders and that is when the new model rolled into place over uh, several months. I'll put a link in uh, the show notes uh, to uh, kind of their article announcing that pay model. Uh, as they mentioned that they'd been rolling it out over a few months, trying it out in some different markets. And in September of 2017, after this settlement is when they announced the new pay model. 
And ultimately, this was the pay structure that they found that was going to be the best way to take care of, to make sure that all of the orders were being accepted. So now I know a lot of you already deliver for DoorDash. Maybe many of you don't yet. Um, some, a lot of you already know how the pay structure works with DoorDash. Some of you don't. So let's talk about that a little bit. I'll tell you a little bit about how their pay is calculated, and then we can go on from there. Now, you hear a lot of people talking about how DoorDash steals tips. You might be one of those that believes that. I'm going to tell you they don't steal your tips. I'm going to be very clear about that. I think it's very clear that they do exactly what they said they're going to do, which is to pay $1 plus your tips. And, uh, and in that regard, no, they don't steal your tips. Now, there are some issues with, with the way the pay structure is structured that makes it look that way. And uh, I can't blame anybody for thinking that it looks that way. But the bottom line is the pay model for DoorDash is $1 plus your tips. That's it. Now, that's a big drop from the $5 they were doing before. And part of the reason that they dropped that from that $5, uh, part of it was, I think, to reduce their costs, but the other part was to pay for some other things. But, you know, folks, I think it's not so much how the tips work. It's that $1 that's the problem in my mind. And uh, $1 to say that that is sufficient for what DoorDash pays on a delivery, considering that they get these delivery fees and all of this, to me, that's a problem. But here's the part that really creates the confusion and creates the problems for them. And that is this add-on that they put on called the guaranteed pay. They wanted to make sure that those low tip orders are taken. So what they did was they created a guaranteed pay structure. And honestly, I, I think it was just brilliant. I think that they just should have thought about a different way of structuring it. But what they're doing is they're subsidizing those low tip offers. And maybe you could call it a form of socialism because they take payment away from the higher tip offers. That's why they drop the base pay. And then they move that over to pay for those low tip offers. And, you know, they came up with this idea, though, that every delivery should have a, a minimum amount, whether or not there's a tip. They said you ought to be able to make so much on this particular delivery, no matter what the customer tips. And so that's how they came up with this guarantee pay. I don't know how they calculate it. Uh, there's no rhyme reason. There's no transparency. But if that $1 plus tip does not meet the minimum, DoorDash will make up the difference. And it's with this guaranteed pay angle that DoorDash was able to make sure that uh, an order didn't pay too low when there wasn't a tip. And I think that's what really helped them and set them apart was, you know, overall, I find that DoorDash orders tend to pay a little bit lower. And, and part of it is because of the way this is structured, but the lows aren't, the lowest of the lows are not as low on DoorDash as they are with anybody else. But the problem comes with the perception that comes out of this, because if your guaranteed pay is, you know, they've set, like in my market, the minimum is $5.50. So if your guaranteed pay is $5.50 and the customer tips $4.50, you get $5.50. If the guaranteed pay is $5.50 and the customer doesn't tip at all, you get $5.50. Tip or no tip, the dasher is getting the same pay. And this is what creates that perception that tips are being stolen. And, I, you know, ultimately, I guess it's a matter of semantics that I think you could very strongly make the case either way that, no, they're not stealing tips or, yes, they are, just because it just looks that bad. So, basically, what their pay model boils down to is it's $1 plus your tips plus the DoorDash additional pay if the tip and the dollar weren't enough to meet the guarantee. So like I said, you know, I can understand both sides of the issue here. I can understand the sentiment behind the claims that the tips are not taken. I also understand why DoorDash is doing it this way because I hear this all the time in Grubhub forums that people would take those low pay offers more often with Grubhub if they would pitch in a few extra dollars. Well, it's pretty much doing the same thing as what DoorDash is doing, isn't it? other than the $1 base, you know, and that's why I say that's the problem with their pay model. Here's one way to think about it. In a lot of states, your tipped workers like waiters, they can be paid less than minimum wage because with the tips, you should still be at minimum wage. But if your tips plus a wage come out to less than minimum wage in a lot of those states, 
the employer's got to pay the difference to still make it minimum. And really, is that any different than what DoorDash is doing? You know, I, I think it's, uh, uh, you, don't, you don't hear about, well, the tips don't make a difference then in those states, right? So in the end, I don't think I've got an issue with how things are structured. And I know some of you are going to agree, and that's okay, because honestly, I disagree with myself too. So how consistent is that, right? But I think DoorDash's mistake is more in how they made it look. And what it did was they created a perception of doing wrong. Now, don't get me wrong. I've got a problem with the pay model, but the pay problem is with that $1 base fee. That's never sufficient. I, okay, I, I beat that dead horse enough. But, but, you know, here's the funny thing is that even though I don't like that $1, I can kind of understand that too. Because let's say they instead went with $3 and, well, they don't have to subsidize as much now with that $3, right? But... The problem is if they're not subsidizing as much, it's harder for them to make a case that they're paying a lot more because the, you can't point to the larger subsidies, right? And so maybe it's a less opportunity to make them look like the good guys or something. I don't know. But I mean, I can, I can almost understand if that's what they did. Not that that's the right way to go, but I could see it happening. But anyway, after enough months of really bad press because of uh, the perceptions that were created by this uh, pay model, DoorDash announced on July 24th that they're going to change the poor, the pay model. And then they just kind of let it sit there for a long time. And then a month later, in August, then they sent out an email and they gave some details on the pay model. And they said what had happened next month. Well, most of the perceptions are next month means the end of September. Definitely hasn't happened by the beginning of September. But basically what the new pay structure is going to boil down to and I've got a link to kind of the semi transcript in the show notes here uh, because I've got a uh, screenshot if you wanted to look at that and uh, it'll give you kind of a screenshot of the email they sent out. But basically what the new pay structure boils down to is they're going to pay you the base amount, whatever they figure the base to be, plus your promotions, plus tips. And in a way, it's, it's a lot like what they're doing right now. Although they did say the base amount now where under the old model, it's a $1 base. Under the new model, that base could be anywhere between $2 and $10. And they said base pay is going to be calculated on a combination of time plus distance plus desirability is what they call it. And, you know, the promotions, the peak pays, the challenges, a lot of those are already here. They are talking about rolling out some more promotions or different promotions. But, you know, the main thing that is going to be different is the guaranteed pay thing is going away. They're just going to do a base pay and then you get your tips on top of the base pay. Now that base pay, like I said, it's supposed to be calculated by time and distance, but desirability is kind of the key to me that tells me that ultimately I don't think the plan's going to be that much different. My gut feeling when I read the details, especially when I read that about desirability, is that the new model is really the old pay model. I wrote an article, I'll have a link in the show notes, it said, meet the new model, same as the old model, you know, from the old Who song, we won't be fooled again. Well, we're getting fooled again, guys, but that's my guess. I mean, you know, that's, that's my semi-educated estimate of what's going to happen. Now, I've seen some screenshots of pay summaries from people where they've been part of the tests, and you know that it's definitely the new model that they're getting just by the way it looks. But folks, there's no transparency on the base pay. It just says base play and tips. And I do not expect to see any transparency. You will never find a formula for how they calculate that base pay. They are no more transparent on that now. And they will not be any more transparent on that now. I, I can almost guarantee you than what they are right now with how they calculate their guarantee pay right now. But the thing to really pay attention in that description is desirability. Because as I see it, desirability is code for we are going to continue to subsidize tips. You're just not going to know about it. We're not going to be as upfront about that. So anyway, here's what I think. This is my theory on how it's going to play out. I don't think that much is really changing. I think they're going to do things pretty close to what they already do. There's not going to be a substantial change in how the pay is structured. Um, but it's going to look differently enough that they can still say that they did something. 
And the reason I think this is because they are scared spitless about not being able to pick up orders. They've got a huge competitive advantage right now over Grubhub. And if they go and adopt a pay model that's more like Grubhub, they're going to run into the same problems. They don't want that to happen. Right now, they are able to deliver more of their orders than Grubhub can. They're able to keep their customers better than Grubhub can. And that's why they are taking a lead over Grubhub. And if they did this straight up delivery fee based on time and distance alone with the tip on top, they'll have the same problem that Grubhub has and uh, they lose their advantage. And folks, I'm telling you right now, that is a huge advantage that they have over there. And being forced to change it right now, I think that's why it is taking so long for them first to figure out a pay model and second to get it implemented because they've got to figure out a way to do this without losing that advantage. And that's why desirability as part of the base pay is such a huge thing here, because here's what I expect to happen when it all settles down. Under the new model, base pay is going to be about $2 on most orders. If the tip is more than $5, you're rarely going to see that base pay be much more than two, maybe two fifty, possibly $3 max if it's a really long delivery. That's about as far as probably the time and distance part of the base pay is going to go. But desirability, folks, if there's no tip, well, that $2 by itself isn't enough and nobody's going to pick up that order. And that's what they mean by desirability. And so they've got to make this more desirable. And that's where it is going to show up now is it's going to show up now in the base pay, not in what they call the DoorDash additional pay. I think it's going to be the same thing. It's just going to be in a different place. It's going to be lumped up with the base pay. And, uh, and that way, it doesn't seem quite as obvious that they're subsidizing tips. But I still think they are going to subsidize tips. And using that term desirability makes it very clear to me that, yes, they are going to continue to subsidize those low tip offers. Now, there will be some increases, but I don't think the increases are going to be as much as people hope for. There's going to be some decreases, but I don't think the decreases will be as steep as people are afraid of. That's my my take on it. I can be very wrong. But here's the thing. Now, Tony Chu, in his email, he promised that the average pay from DoorDash would increase. Folks, do not take that to mean substantial increase. Do not take that to mean much of an increase at all, because you've got to be aware. Folks, if you've been paying attention to him at all, with the way he has spun things with the old pay models, with uh, all the different things, just the way he spins things, with the fact that he said we will make this pay change next month. And with it more than likely happening way back in the end of September, that just tells you that he knows how to parse words and he knows how to get as close to the edge as he can with his words. And that's going to be the case with increase. I expect that there will be an increase, but don't expect that increase to be dollars. Expect it to be pennies, if even that much but it'll be just enough to call it an increase. Now, obviously, your higher tip orders where you've got five, six, seven dollars or more is a tip, the increase on those orders is going to increase by at least a dollar because your base is going from one to two dollars or more. I don't expect on those high tip order orders that the base is gonna increase by much more than that though. But I think when all is said and done, most of the orders are going to pay out fairly close to what they do right now, um, probably within a dollar one way or the other. I do think that you're also going to see a decrease on some orders, but I don't think it's going to be a dramatic decrease. Those de decreases, they won't be as steep as people are afraid they will. And uh, like in a market like mine, where it's $5.50 is the minimum, that minimum might drop to maybe $5. Maybe, maybe 450. I just, I don't expect it to go much lower than that. I can't prove it, but it's just, it's just a hunch that I've got. Okay. And if that's what they do, they only drop it by 50 cents to a dollar. I think it's genius because people are bracing for those $3 orders like you see on Postmates and Grubhub and Uber Eats. But now when that minimum comes in at $5, you know what's happened? Because the expectation has been set, people aren't upset that their minimum was decreased. They're thinking, oh, hey, that's not nearly as bad as I thought. That's that's wonderful. That's what happens. I think it's just brilliant. 
you know, if that's what happens, I don't know, it kind of makes me uh, think of that. If you've ever seen that little uh, cartoon commercial with those little British guys and they're like, brilliant. Now, folks, I can be totally wrong on this. I could have completely the wrong take on it. It's just my educated guess looking at the wording of what they did and just kind of from what at least my understanding of how these companies operate, that it's it's to me the most logical conclusion that what I expect to happen. Now, the thing that I'm clinging to when I make that conclusion is ultimately they they are going to hang on like everything that they can to that advantage they have over Grubhub. And that is the fact that they do a much better job of completing orders and thus keeping their customers than Grubhub does. They cannot, they will not do anything that they can to lose that advantage. And doing a dramatic change in the pay model really threatens that advantage. And that's why I don't expect it to actually in practice be a whole lot different. But I, you know, if they do, let's say they do make a huge change, they totally change it up. Maybe they create, uh, you know, the way they define that model in, in their email, it could still be anything, you know, honestly, because there's not a lot of detail. But if they do change things up a lot more than I think they will, you know, there's three things that they could do to still try and keep that edge as far as making sure that their deliveries are completed. You know, the first one, though, they tried it already, and that is to force drivers to accept more orders. Just say it is what it is, and you have to accept more of those low orders if you're going to work for us. And they got their butts handed to them in a lawsuit. So they can't do that one. That's out. That's that's not an option anymore. But if they do change how they pay much more dramatically, there are a couple of things that they could do. You know, one is they could maybe decide not to communicate what the tip's going to be. You know, then drivers can't cherry pick based on the tip. Now, folks, I could be completely wrong and it would not be the first time. But here's the thing that I cling to on this. And this is why I really feel like it's going to stay pretty close to the same when it's all said and done. And that is that they do not want to give up that advantage that they've got over Grubhub. Folks, DoorDash does a much better job of completing orders and especially of making sure that those zero tip orders are delivered than Grubhub does. And so they're able to keep their customers better. And Grubhub is great at marketing, but they're losing customers left and right. And a lot of that is because they can't get their orders finished. Now, they could make a big change. Let's say if they switch to something more like Grubhub, where... You know, it pays higher, uh, pays a lot higher on some orders, but then it's, you also have like those $3 orders there. If they do that, then they've got to do something different than what Grubhub does. Now, one thing they could try, they already tried it by forcing drivers to accept more orders. Well, they got their butts handed to them in a lawsuit. So that's kind of out the window. And one thing they could try is by not letting drivers know what the tip is going to be ahead of time. I think that would cut back on cherry picking. You couldn't choose just the higher tip orders because you don't know. I wouldn't be totally opposed, honestly, because I'm comfortable enough with myself being able to play the averages to still do well and still make good decisions. But uh, I don't know that it's a bad way to go, but I don't see it happening mainly because they've already said that you will still know what the delivery amount is going to be. So I don't see that part happening. Now, the other thing, though, that they could do is, you know, go to something more like a Grubhub model and then just really ramp up some of the incentives and the bonuses for having a higher acceptance rate. And they've they've hinted that uh, they've talked about being able to do some of that stuff, but I don't see them spending a lot of money to do that. And this is why it's got to come from somewhere, right? They don't have any wiggle room under their current system. Folks, if you add up that $1 base pay that they do right now and what they pay out extra for that additional pay when there's not a tip, it still comes out to not a whole lot more than $2, which is what their new base minimum is going to be. So there's no wiggle room right there. There's no room for really adding anything there. The only thing that they could do is they've either got to open up their wallets and start paying a whole lot more or They've got to take it away from their peak pay promotions. And I don't see them taking a whole lot away from that. So there's not a lot of room to work with. And they're in a competitive environment, folks. And all of these other platforms, when they've changed their pay model, they've done a huge decrease. And when everybody else is slashing costs, I don't see DoorDash 
making a huge increase in their costs, especially as they're going into an, a public offering where people want to know that they're going to be profitable. Do you see what I'm saying there? But the bottom line is we don't know for sure what's going to happen. We won't know until it happens. I'm kind of expecting that the model is going to roll out on the 30th, partly because Tony said it would happen next month when he wrote the email in August. And just the way he parses words, that probably means September 30th. But the other reason being that that's a Monday and it just makes sense because Monday is the start of the pay week for DoorDash. Now, I'm planning myself that first week or two to probably put a lot more time into DoorDash, not because I expect that it's going to be a better model. Part of it is to kind of get a feel for what the model really looks like, how it really averages out. But the other reason for doing that is I think they're going to do a lot like what Grubhub did uh, two different times this year in my market when they rolled out new pay models. Because what they did was they rolled out the model and then they kind of started paying a little more right at first. And it slowly just kind of dwindled down. And, and especially the last time when they did their major rollout, uh, they started adding a lot of bonuses to lower paying deliveries. And those bonuses have more or less dried up since then. And I think the idea is pay more so that people don't grumble as much. And then you just kind of wean them off of that increase. You know what I mean? So if you're going to do much more with DoorDash, you want to do that right away because I think they're probably going to do the same thing. Ultimately, Courier Nation, my advice is this. Do not get too caught up in whatever the pay model is, whatever the company is. Pay more attention to your profit. Choose your deliveries well, and, and DoorDash is one of the best at letting you know what to expect on that delivery, but use the 40 cent rule in evaluating delivery, no matter what the model is. To me, it doesn't matter how much of my pay is from the tip and how much is from the delivery company, how much was incentive, any of that stuff. To me, the bottom line is what matters. My profit per hour is what matters. Use the 40 cent rule, make good decisions, Pay attention to the nuances of the new model. Get to know how it works. Get to know where your benefits are. Give it a shot and then read and react. Folks, I want to thank you for joining me again here this week. And I'd love to ask a favor of you. But I only want to ask this favor if you get any value out of any of the information that I'm providing. It, whether it's in uh, the EntreeCourier.com websites whether it is the business tip of the day that we're putting out on the Entre Courier site on YouTube and on Instagram. So whether it's in the blog or whether it's in the podcast, any of this stuff, if we're giving anything that is helpful, then I'll ask this favor. Can you spread the word about us? Tell people about us. Let them know. If you know other people that are doing delivery work, tell them about us because if we're helping you out, then hopefully we are able to help them out as well. If you can leave reviews about uh, the podcast on any of the podcast sites, because those reviews help us get found. If you can just spread the word, then we can help more people take control of their business. Courier Nation, I want to leave you with this thought. You are not at the mercy of any pay model. Okay. You are a business owner. You can make your decisions and the pay models, yes, they can benefit you. They can hurt you a little bit on a delivery by delivery basis, but you get to make the decisions. Courier Nations, I ask you, I beg you to please take control of your life, take, take control of your career, your business, go and be the boss.